Okay. <laughs> Up next, am I the asshole for not wanting to invite my mother's home health aide to Thanksgiving? I'm 38 female, and my mother is 70 female. She's been suffering ongoing health issues for some time and has lupus. I live out of state and currently can't relocate, although I visit her as much as possible. She has a home health aide, 22 female. I've met the aide on a handful of occasions, and she's lovely. My mother always waxes lyrical about her. That said, my sister and I don't know her all that well. I always host Thanksgiving, and it's usually a big thing, so I start planning months in advance. I am admittedly a type A, LOL. My mom called and asked me if I could invite the aide because the aide doesn't have any family. She's a single mother and is estranged from her parents. I'm extremely sympathetic to the aide situation, but I'm hesitant to invite her because I don't know her. I mentioned that concern to my sister. We often have differing opinions on stuff like this. And she told me that if mom says it goes and that otherwise this girl who worked to help our mom so much would be alone on Thanksgiving. I now feel like a bit of an asshole, but I feel like it could potentially be awkward for her because she won't know anyone except my mom. And it will almost be like she's working on Thanksgiving when she could be having a Friendsgiving or spending time with her baby son. Am I the asshole? Edit, she would either have to bring her three-year-old son or get a babysitter. As I live out of state, she would also have to spend the weekend and stay overnight. That's it. That's all the context. Where's the mom staying though? That's my first question is where's your mom staying? I mean, if they have room for her, let's go. I don't. I. I mean, I guess my thought with the holidays is a situation like that. If the person wants to come, open arms. I agree. If she feels like she's going to be working on the holiday and doesn't want to come, that's great. But like, if you invite her because she has nowhere else to go open arms i don't know i agree also i mean i know it's a weird time though like right now because of covid you know, covid yeah. and stuff but i mean if she's taking care of the mother like i think that's it's fair game she's yeah like, yeah that's probably who they're i agree and i look at it i don't know how much assistance her mom really needs but i look at it as your mom isn't going to get to where you live by herself who's driving her there Who's going to take care of her while she's there? Can it be you? Because if it can't be you, then does she need the caregiver? Mm -hmm. So also she said baby, but like her baby son, but like a three-year-old isn't a baby. Like three-year-olds are fun. They're mobile little people. <laughs> they talk. Like they're just – they're fun. So it's not necessarily a baby. Three-year-olds are fucking the shit. They are they're not so fun. Just <laughs> they're so fucking fun. So I look they at really it. They are, honestly. They're so fun. Like, I, I want to, like, skip the ones and twos. Like, give me a three-year-old. Really? When people say terrible twos, I'm like, I love two to four. No, two to five-year-olds. Give me the three-year-old. They're hilarious because they're just, like, little people that, like, learn how to, like, they're like drunk people things. Yeah. So I love weird. the saying where they're like, oh, they're like drunk adults. Like, <laughs> they just do whatever they want. But, yeah, I think – um. Overall vote on this one was asshole. I an asshole. I look at my family's experience with caregivers, like my grandma. Like I live in my grandma's house. Like this podcast studio was my grandma's house. Like this is my grandma's place. And so before my grandma died, she had three amazing caregivers. They got invited everywhere. Yeah. They were family. Like my dad still talks to them. Yeah. And we also have another family member, like family friend that we consider family because my family is just inclusive as fuck. Um, Judy, who Judy has a caregiver. Judy's caregiver comes to Passover, Seder dinner, Hanukkah dinner. Like her caregiver comes to everything because she's just like an extension of Judy. Like she's family at this point. Right. So, I mean, just like, you don't have to be weird. Like this isn't like, this isn't the help. Yeah. So I think that's the issue is that she is just so frustrated because it's not going completely according to plan. And she's yeah. so type A that she's like, I I can't make this work. I can't be flexible. I can't be nimble. 
It's the holidays. It's the holidays. Roll. We're supposed to love. Roll the punches. That's what we Stole need to do. Stole the words right out of my fucking <laughs> mouth. Cheers to that. Nope. Not fist my drink. Sorry. Cheers, you goofball. Holy shit. Oh, well, I wasn't holding my drink and it just felt like really in the moment I wanted to just keep it going. Roll with the punches. Holiday season is all and about rolling. And it was rolling. a punch. So I feel like it went with the, the theme. It did. Um, yeah. I don't know. I think, I think as a culture, as a society, as a world, with the holidays, we need to start setting a different precedence, and and start to really just focus in on the fact that the holidays really are just a time to take a step back, to not be moving so fast, to just enjoy the moment and accept and no and not judge and love and just really take this moment to be inclusive. Yeah. And I think that move past past grievances and just start the year anew. Well, that's why I think it's funny because like the movie, the Grinch, it's just like Cindy Lou who was onto something. She really was. She knew like there's so (laughs) much noise going around the holidays that people get so stressed out. And so like, on edge and it causes fights and everyone wants it to be perfect when it's not then they're upset and they put so much work into it and it's not panning out exactly how they wanted it's just like all this stuff where it's like chaos think about Cindy Lou Who it's just about love or buddy the elf Christmas spirit so top comment on this one you would be the asshole if you can't create a holiday environment where she feels welcome and not on the clock that's your problem to deal with Super ironic that on the holiday dedicated to giving thanks for all you have, you wouldn't want to extend an invitation to the woman who cares for your mother. So true. Yeah. Drops mic. Next comment is along the same lines. She cares for your mother and sustains her during her life. She deals with the accompanied hardships and obstacles. Caring for an elder is quite hard. I think it'll be courteous of you to invite her. She will find out that you held a Thanksgiving dinner either way. The evidence might be a familiar photos or hearing it from your mom. And it'll be uncanny and awkward not to invite her. You raise some concerns pertain to her wanting to be with her son or with friends. But those can be prevented upon a polite declining. I think you have an ulterior motive. You don't see her as a part of the family and don't want her to appear in pictures or intervene in your conversations with family members. So can I interject right there? Because that is exactly what I was thinking about. It That's what gets me with this story is that she doesn't just say, honestly, it makes me uncomfortable. I don't want her to be there. I want to just be family and I don't know her and I feel like social anxiety with people I don't know. She's not making it about herself. She's projecting these other things onto this person that she has no idea about. Well, you know what? She might feel like she's going to be working. Mm-hmm. And I don't want her to feel like she's going to be working That's on an Thanksgiving. Excuse. And also, she probably wants to, like, be with some other people, like a Friendsgiving. That would probably be more comfortable for her. No. Like, what? That is That's not – an excuse. No. Just own up to your shit. If you feel really uncomfortable by it, like, at least say that. At least say that. Don't make it about other people and assuming – their intentions, their desires. Like, don't assume for other people. Like, speak for yourself and go from there. I agree. Yeah, I think it's her probably being embarrassed that she doesn't want her mom's caregiver to be there and, like, being like, oh, who are you? How do you know the family? Oh, I'm I'm so-and-so's caregiver. Like, it's probably embarrassment trying to portray this image. But, yeah, I think it's a lot of, like, assumptions, like you said. Like, extend the invitation. I think with a lot of these stories, like this next one that I might read, it's extend the invitation. And if the person doesn't want to come or feels overwhelmed, it's up to them. them. But at least you extended the invitation. Your conscience is clear. You feel good. You did your part. Well, yeah. And you can always also just say like, hey, I I completely understand if you have other things going on that you would rather do. Um, but if you don't, for whatever reason, just want to welcome you to our experience. Like, yeah, it doesn't, you don't, you don't have to be like, Hey, come to my party, please. 
Like it can just it, it can be it can like, be casual. It can be very casual. Like hey, like if you have other things to do, like no pressure at all. But, you don't want to make it a pity invite, but yeah, saying like hey, yeah. no pressure. We'd love to have you. Yeah. Please come. But yeah. if you have other things, totally get it. Get it. But still make them feel included. Exactly. Oh, <laughs>